Hi everyone, the most significant difference between qualitative and quantitative research studies is in the types of measurement used in collecting information from the respondents. Qualitative research mostly uses descriptive statements to seek answers to the research questions, whereas in quantitative research, these answers are usually sought on one of the measurement scales, nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. Welcome to today's video when we are going to talk about these scales. If information is not collected using one of these scales at the time of data collection, it is transformed into variables by using these measurement scales at the time of analysis. Measurement on these scales could be either in the form of qualitative categories or through a precise unit of measurement. We'll be talking about some of the examples today. Those scales which have a unit of measurement such as interval and ratio are considered to be more refined, objective and accurate. On the other hand, nominal and ordinal scales are considered a bit subjective and hence not as accurate as they do not have a unit of measurement per se. The greater the refinement in the unit of measurement of a variable, the greater the confidence placed in the findings by others, of course other things being equal. One of the main differences between the physical and social sciences is the unit of measurement used and the degree of importance attached to them. Now in the physical sciences, measurements have to be absolutely accurate and precise, whereas in the social sciences, they may vary from the very subjective to the very quantifiable. Within the social sciences, the emphasis is on precision in measurement, which varies markedly from one discipline to another. For example, an anthropologist normally uses very subjective units of measurement, whereas an economist or an epidemiologist emphasizes objective measurement. In today's video, let's talk about the four main types of scales. And these are the nominal scale, ordinal, interval, or ratio scale. Let's start with nominal scale. Now, a nominal scale enables the classification of individuals, objects, or responses based on a common or shared property or characteristic. Such individuals, objects, or responses are divided into a number of subgroups in such a way that each member of the subgroup shares a common characteristic or a property. Look at the examples that I'm showing you on your screen. A variable measured on a nominal scale may have one, two, or more subcategories, depending upon the extent of variation. For example, water and taxi have only one subgroup, whereas the variable gender can be classified into two subcategories, male and female. Or maybe these days, of course, you can have transgender and other genders, of course. Political parties can similarly be classified into subcategories like labor, liberal, democrats, greens, depending on the country in which you are residing in. Those who identify themselves either by membership or belief as belonging to the labor party are classified as labor. Those identifying with the liberals are classified as liberal and so on. The name chosen for a subcategory is notional, of course, but for effective communication, it is best to choose something that describes the characteristic of the subcategory. The other scale is the ordinal scale, also known as the ranking scale. Just like nominal scale is also called classificatory, ordinal scale is called ranking scale. Now an ordinary scale or an ordinal scale has all the properties actually of a nominal scale. They categorize individuals, objects, responses or a property into subgroups on the basis of a very common characteristic. But it also ranks the subgroups in a certain order. Look at the examples here that I highlight in front of your screen. They are arranged in either ascending or descending order according to the extent in which or the extent to which a subcategory reflects the magnitude of variation in the variable. For example, income can be measured either quantitatively in dollars and cents or qualitatively using subcategories like above average, average and below average. These categories can also be developed on the basis of quantitative measures. For example, below $10,000 is defined as below average. 10,000 to 30,000 as average and above 30,000 could be above average. It's up to you as a researcher. The subcategory above average will indicate that people so grouped have more income than people in the average category and people in the average category have more income than those in the below average category. Common sense. These subcategories of income are related to one another in terms of magnitude of people's income. But the magnitude itself cannot be quantifiable and hence the difference between above average and average or between average and below average subcategories cannot be ascertained. The same is true for other variables such as socioeconomic status and attitudes that are measured on an ordinal scale. So an ordinal scale has all the properties and characteristics of a nominal scale in addition to some of its own. Here subcategories are arranged in order of the magnitude of the property or the characteristic. Also the distance between the subcategories is not equal. 
and there is no quantitative unit of measurement. Let's talk about the interval scale now. Now, an interval scale has all the characteristics of an ordinal scale. That is, individuals or responses belonging to a subcategory have a common characteristic and the subcategories are arranged in an ascending or descending order. In addition, an interval scale also uses a unit of measurement that enables the individuals or responses to be placed at equally spaced intervals in relation to the spread of the variable which was missing in the ordinal scale. The scale has a starting and a terminating point. It is divided into equally spaced units and intervals. Again, that is the difference between internal interval and ordinal scale. In the interval scale, the starting and terminating points and the number of units and intervals between them are arbitrary and vary from scale to scale. Celsius and Fahrenheit scales, for example, are interval scales. Now, in the Celsius system, the starting point is 0 degrees Celsius, also considered the freezing point, and the terminating point considered as the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. The gap between the freezing and boiling points is divided into 100 equally spaced intervals known as degrees. In the Fahrenheit system, however, the freezing point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit and the boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit and the gap between the two points is divided into 180 equally spaced intervals. Each degree or interval is a measurement of temperature. The higher the degree, the higher the temperature. As the starting and terminating points, as the starting and terminating points are arbitrary, they are not absolute. That is, you cannot say that 60 degrees Celsius is twice as hot as 30 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Fahrenheit is three times hotter than 10 degrees Fahrenheit. This basically means that no mathematical operation can be performed on the readings. It can be performed on the differences between the readings. For example, if the difference in temperature between two objects A and B is 15 degrees Celsius and the difference in temperature between two other objects C and D is 45 degrees Celsius, you can say that the difference in temperature between C and D is three times as greater than between A and B. An attitude towards an issue measured on a Thunstone scale is also similar. So don't think that interval scales and ordinal scales cannot measure attitude. Interval scales can use something like a Thunstone attitudinal scale. I will discuss it in a separate video. An ordinal scale can also measure attitude, sometimes on a uh, kind of a Likert attitudinal scale. So the Likert does not measure the absolute intensity of the attitude, of course, but it will simply measure it in relation to another person. Finally, let's talk about the ratio scale. A ratio scale has all the properties of nominal scale, ordinal scale and interval scale. It also has a starting point fixed at zero. Therefore, it is an absolute scale. The difference between the interval is always measured from a zero point. This means the ratio scale can be used for mathematical operations. The measurement of income, age, height and weight are examples of this scale. They all start from zero. A person who is 40 years of age is of course twice as old as 20 years old. You can say that here, but not in the case of the previous scale that we talked about, which was the interval scale. A person earning $60,000 per year earns three times the salary of a person earning $20,000. These kind of comparisons are possible when you're using the ratio scale, not so much the interval scale. So I hope you guys understood the difference between the four types of scales that are commonly used for measurement in research. All the best with your study guys please like comment share and subscribe if there are any questions or anything i missed please let me know in the comment section below i look forward to hearing from you bye for now